Hey, I'm Alex Rome, and today we're going to go over some automation techniques, tips, and tricks. Before I get into this, I just want to mention that I revamped my website, alexromesound.com. So all the people that had trouble downloading the preset pack after purchasing it, um, that you'll no longer have an issue ever again if you ever buy anything from me again. That is the Future Base favorites pack for Silent One that was available. I think of all of you that purchased it, 95% of you had trouble downloading it. And I had to email the pack to you. It, there was a link there upon purchase, but um, yeah, it totally, uh, I, I, I got rid of that e-commerce platform. I, I got a new one. It's called Gumroad. And then I remade my website to look way prettier in Adobe Muse. So it is uh, is now finally up and running. I put like two weeks into that site. That was the hardest thing I've ever done. I don't know how to make websites. So making that thing was not, was not easy. That was a lot of work. But I had to do it. You guys couldn't buy the preset pack and download it. So I had to do that for you. So there you go, guys. Um... If you have not purchased the Future Base preset pack for Silent One, it is now easier to get, and the process is way easier and nicer. So let's uh, let's get into this. I was just watching this video on Nicky Romero, and he had this awesome build that I wanted to build. So I want to remake it, and what's going to be fun about this is I'll get to show you how I would automate this. The uh, reason I'm doing automation is somebody just commented on my wine beat video, wine date and a beat video. They said, how did you do that automation stuff? And uh, so I'm going to hopefully answer that. Automation, I use when I need it to do something. Automation works like this. If you have a sound that goes from one to eight, and you want this sound to sound different from here to here, but you're going to use the same track, you're probably going to need some automation to help you do that. So me, I'm going to use I'm going to use this section here for a build up. Here at this point it's going to sound different than it will sound down here, and that's why I would use automation. So let's uh let's let's put this to use. Let's I'm going to show you everything about it. Well, here we go. We have our sound there, and now it's a super saw. And I'm going to put it up there because I know with my pitch modulation, I'm going to come down an octave anyway. So, modulation or automation can turn these dials for us without us having to sit there and turn the dials. What does that mean? Well, here's the dial right here. This is the pitch bend modulation. I'm going to use automation to turn this knob for me because, or because I don't want to sit here and have to turn this knob myself. Especially because I need like five of these other knobs turning. And I, I don't have five mice that are going to do that for me, five hands that are going to do that for me. So I need to use automation to do that. So I'm going to use automation to do this for me. Something like that. You heard how rough that sounded and how, you know, it sounded like shit. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to come to this down arrow here. Go to silent one and I'm going to find that dial that dial should be called a pitch bend because it's right next to the pitch number so if i come to pitch bend it should be so that i can do something like this and have that kind of effect so i started building this build because i wanted to remake this build that Nicky Romero used, and I think I, I haven't watched that video now in a couple hours, so I hope I get this right. So, so 
So let's get this and let's get 128 beats per minute. I think it's actually something like this, this close together. Something like this. I don't know, it's like it's like really simple, but the way it just worked with the drums that he had and whatnot ended up sounding really good. So oops. That's so annoying when it just doesn't stop triggering. That so here we go. So there's my sound and I'm gonna make it a little rougher sounding. Then we'll get to more automation. Okay, so there is our build. Now, we automated the pitch, but I still have more things that I like to automate. One of those things will be the filter here. I like to automate filters. So when I play it, my filter is all the way closed. I'm actually going to open it a little because I'm going to use this one as my automation one. So automation works like this. I have a filter. I have a couple dials here and a couple dials here. Well, how do I find this dial to automate it? Well, you can, a lot of the times you can just read the synth and it'll, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. This is called the filter control here this area filter control and it controls this filter and this filter so I want to automate this stuff this knob well I gotta look probably look for something that says filter control cutoff or a lot of uh, a lot of synths are different some will be named FC cutoff or FCC you know it could be anything it's not that hard though because it's you know they make it so you can easily find it if we go to filter control cutoff, good chance it's probably going to be that knob that I wanted to automate. So here, let's listen to what happens when I do this. Okay, so there we go. We found that one. Another thing that I like to do with my buildups is I like to automate the dry and wet of the reverb. So how would I do that? Well, we got to find something that says, you know, reverb or something, and then we got to find wet. So let's go to the R section. Mind you, this is in alphabetic order. Reverb, dry, wet, and we have all the other stuff too. The amount of stuff you can automate is pretty intense. It's pretty crazy. So I like to do this with my reverb. Give it a nice little bend. Like that, and it kind of just goes into nothingness because it's just so reverbed and wet and like, you know, things like that. So here's another thing that we can automate. If I just turn this on and I go to chord, I can now automate this dial, the arpeggiator time. 
I don't know if this will sound good because I have it hitting it on like off beats. But you know, you don't know if everything's gonna sound good right away, so you can try it. So I want halfway through this build I want it to start going a little faster. I'm gonna put this up to one sixteenth. Oops, maybe I have to go up to one thirty two. Something like that. And then don't whoop, hit undo. And then we will go to this half. And we can add some more notes here. Something like that. Bang. Now that's automation. Now look at all the things I have automating. And you still, you know, you could call it quits here on making this perfect, or you could still automate. There's a lot more things you can automate. Me personally, I like to do this. That little space in between the drop, if the drop was right here, the drop starts right here, and the, the build, I'm going to end it right here. I always like to, I like to get the volume, and I cut it right here. So that my drop can start and all this noise can just go away and not interfere with any of those nice big transients that I'm gonna that are I'm gonna have come in. There we go. So bang, all that automation on one sound. Mind you. I all my sounds have some kind of automation on it. It's so important. So let's just pick a uh Let's pick a, uh, a random beat here in my projects, and I'm, I'm going to take you through and show you what um, kind of automations that I would have used just messing around. And while we're staring at my desktop, if you see this thing, this Mexoscope, Mexoscope by uh, Electronics with an X something electronics with an X. Nicky Romero in that Nicky Romero video, he was using this awesome plugin that shows you the waveform, and that's what that was. Um, but you can play your song, and it'll show you a detailed outline of your the waveform your song is giving off, because you I think you put that, that's meant for the master channel. And you can see if you have bass frequencies and whatnot crashing into each other, and I thought that was pretty cool. It's definitely going to be a helpful tool when I get it. So, automatically, we see automation. Now, this automation is not with silent. I automated the another synth called Serum. You are, may or may not know what Serum is. But look, it's the same stuff. I went down to here, and I went and found a filter cutoff. Fill cutoff. See, it's a... It's, it's it's uh, named differently here, but it's the same shit. Filter cutoff. And the reason for this is, well, I'll show you. I had a system overload, but if you notice, when I open the filter here, it gets really loud and open. And my system's going to keep overloading, but you get the point. Um, it's very, it doesn't look like that, um, that buildup, because what I did is I kind of drew with the line here and made it do cool things. Now... This gets really loud here, and the reason I had it get quiet here is because down here I have the counter melody that comes in. 
So let's uh, let's try to listen to this without having it overload. So it's going to be loud here, and then here you're going to hear another sound come in that I had to make room for. So to make room for it, I used automation. So there you go. That is, that is, you know, that is a classic example of what I would use automation for. I got a nice, um, nice little build up here of just unloading the cutoff, and that gets really loud. And then the bass drop sounds really cool. There you go, guys. That is what I did my automation here, and that is the reason I would use automation in certain areas of a beat. So. It could be anywhere, you know, you just need to use it when you need it, right? Or use it when you don't need it because it'll still sound cool. Make sure it makes your beat come alive. So there you go. Um, I'm going to say, so there you go again. So there you go, guys. I hope you learned something from this video. My name is Alex Rome, and until next time, I'll talk to you soon.